Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of BS with Jake Paul. Episode 13, we have Israel Adesanya on today. The fight's in two days. Shit is getting wild. We are on our way to Phoenix. Let's get right into it. Round one. Round one. Well, Dika, we had a crazy weekend of UFC fights. I mean, wow, to say the least. There was a debate over whether Sugar Sean O'Malley actually beat Peter Yan, but to anyone who doesn't know fighting, they would think that Peter's takedowns won him the fight. However, he did nothing when he had those takedowns, meaning Sugar Sean O'Malley, my fucking boy, pulled off the W and now has a potential run for the UFC Bantamweight Championship. Because TJ Dillashaw dislocated his arm, got his ass beat, feel bad for him. Yeah, Dillashaw literally got manhandled in there. That was embarrassing. He looked like a goddamn kid in timeout by his big brothers. Like, it was bad. It was like a, getting a wedgie. It looked like he was getting a wedgie in there. He did have his shoulder dislocated, and there's a debate online right now as to whether or not betters who bet on TJ Dillashaw should be refunded personally at better. If we were in a situation like this, we would refund those types of bets. And I think these other big sports books should do the same. And then in the championship, Islam versus Charles Oliveira. Islam pulls off the arm triangle, submits the submissioner. An amazing fight. And this is a massive fight between him and Alexander Volkanovsky. Volkanovsky, uh, Volkan, the Volcano. Alexander Volcano. Can Alexander Volkanovsky become the champion of two weight divisions. And speaking of fighting, Vidal Riley's manager has gone on air to say that if I beat Anderson Silva, he would call my team to try and set up a fight between me and Vidal Riley. Now, how funny would it be if I go up against KSI's trainer before fighting KSI? KSI is scared of me. I've said it since day one that this fight between us will never happen because he won't step up to the plate and actually do his part and actually step into the ring. So maybe, just maybe, I'll go after Vidal and prove to the world how much of a pussy KSI is. The Lakers are fucking 0-3. Wow, they have a DoorDash driver on their fucking team. They picked up a DoorDash driver off of TikTok videos and put him on their goddamn, this is the NBA, people. Nothing against DoorDash drivers. I'm not saying DoorDash drivers could be athletic, but I'm saying this is the Los Angeles fucking Lakers. LeBron James trying to prove that he's better than Michael Jordan. And this is the team you want to build? What the fuck, Los Angeles? Okay. I'm all about opportunities. I'm all about the guy that's coming from the DoorDash, coming from the grocery store. Listen, this guy must not know about the Cleveland Browns picking up the guy who literally walked onto the field, was a Juco football player, and just walked onto an NFL tryout and just walked on the field and got a fucking sign to the team, ran a 4-3. What's his name? I don't know. But exactly. Nobody, no, what the fuck is the point of your story? What the, what is the point? meets preparation. Bro, and you're talking about the Cleveland Browns, who went to the playoffs for the first time in like 20 years, two years ago, and have just been on a perennial losing streak for the rest of the whole goddamn time. So yes, that's my point in case. They're picking up people off of the streets who are walk-ons, and the Lakers are doing the same. You want to compare the Lakers to the Browns? No! Christian McCaffrey gets traded to the 49ers. Pretty shocking. They are going to have a stack, stack, stack offense. But can Christian McCaffrey stay injury-free? That is the big question. He has been inactive for basically the past two years, and the guy is injury-prone. So to give up a bunch of draft picks for an injury-prone player, I don't know. And I'm not too sure what the Carolina Panthers are doing. I think at this point, they are purposely trying to suck so that they can get first round draft picks. Just my opinion. Well, I could say that, but they are coming off of a great, excellent win this week. Um, they just, you know, getting rid of McCaffrey and then winning a game, I think that's pretty, pretty exciting for them. And you never know, they might turn the season around. Maybe McCaffrey was that virus for the Panthers and uh, now they finally can be that jungle Panther that they need to be. Wow. Um, no, they still suck. They still suck. All right, let's get right into this interview. Israel Adesanya. I need help figuring out wh what I'm going to do when they call my name in the ring. Like when they announce like, in the blue corner, Jake the problem child, Paul. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I this is what my first thing is. I think I hit him with the. Oh, like when the camera's on you and yeah. you can hype and shit. Yeah, because normally I just like hit them with the whatever, the stupid ass. Okay. But like that's too like, come on. 
You know what I'm saying? You have to, you have to, you have to put a little spice on it though. Like this. I think you have to go but, like a little crazier. <laughs> like that. Like I, I think that's good. You have good, to like right? really like like yo <laughs> yo. <laughs> that would be crazy to hit it with it. Yo. 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 Oh, yo, that thing bounced. Yo, that shit busted. Yo, that shit busted. Yo, 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 I can just yo. see someone putting a dumbass clip to that right now. Bro, that's crazy. I know crazy. it's gonna go on TikTok. Some yo, tag us so that we can find that shit. Somebody's gonna be eating cereal. Like, I'm just eating cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's like it's like the the shit they did with Russell Wilson with his Danger Witch from Subway. You've seen this? Oh my God, it's it's very cringe, but. I, I seen Dave Portnoy. He like had this reaction to it. That's hilarious. He's just like, "What do you mean? I'm just, I'm just fucking sitting right here." Time out. Time out. Time out. Sorry to interrupt the show, but we have our first sponsor. Give. I mean, come on, guys. We're doing it. We're, we're, we're really a sports show now because this sponsor is absolutely amazing. This is one of my friends, Aubrey Marcus. Uh, he owns this company called On It. It's an absolutely amazing company, and Aubrey is such a good guy, and I wanted the first ever sponsorship to be organic, and something that I use, a product that I actually use, which is Alpha Brain. As you guys know, I have a ton of stuff going on on a daily basis. I run multiple businesses, sports shows, uh, boxing, content creator. Girlfriend. Um, I'm a girlfriend as well. <laughs> so needless to say, I always have a lot going on in my brain. I mean, you do, you have the crazy schedule. Marcus is my assistant, he knows the schedule, so I rely on Alpha Brain to help me focus, to help me complete tasks. I mean, this stuff is absolutely amazing. Shout out to Aubrey Marcus, we love you. And me and Aubrey hooked it up so that you guys could actually get Alpha Brain for free. So go to onit.com backslash Jake. That's O-N-N-I-T.com backslash Jake, and you can get Alpha Brain for free. We got you with a special hookup. Go try this stuff, we love you. I've, I've just been like too, too serious in all the fights. I'm just gonna have more fun. I mean, shit. I'm gonna just be like. This might be good. This might. Talking, open. yeah. Just like dribbling the basketball, like we were doing. We were doing shadow boxing. I think it's gonna open up a new skill set for you too. Like people are already gonna see new talent, but then the more fun you have in there too. Yep. Like are not all angry, like knocking his <laughs> fucking head yeah. off. Like I think that's why you be crying after you be knocking people heads off, cause you be mad. You be like. <laughs> <laughs> like you'd be like, did I kill him? <laughs> yeah, after this fight, maybe you'll like laugh after you knock Silva out. That'll be crazy. Do you think you're gonna cry? No. What's the over under that, Jake? I, I don't under. think I will. What's the handshake? I doubt, but? No, I don't. I won't cry. You won't cry, bro, to celebrate after you knock this nigga out, bro. I don't know. I don't think so. You emotional, bro. It's okay, bro. For people who don't know. A- Run this up, guy's hit emotional. the ropes, hit the... He like, he, he, his, his emotion is real... Pa- it's not emotional. I call it passionate. Yeah, everyone's emotional, but people are afraid to show it. So they either hide it or they show it. But the, everyone's emotional. But it's also different when you're there, right? It's like oh, you're spending all these months preparing for this. For this one, like, bro, for these 20 minutes. Peak performance moment. Yeah, but I don't know, like, emotional and passionate. Like, you can be sad and still not cry. You can be mad and still, like... Do you think passion and emotion are the same exact thing? Is passion an emotion? No. But but it's built off of emotions, I guess. You're on something there. Yeah, I guess you love your passion. Yeah, love. It's it's based off of love. We figured it out. Crazy. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I'm on the Joe Rogan podcast you right now. Are you woke right now? I'm just feeling like we're getting so deep and intricate. <laughs> the fight is in two days be there be square we have an amazing guest on today who has actually fought anderson silva israel adesanya the legend everybody (laughs) izzy what up my guy how are you i'm gravy baby um um maybe a little bit uh 
almost where you're at. You're where I want to be right now, which is like about fight week, about to get it done. So, yeah, I'm about there. But we've just – the finish line is in the horizon. But, you know, we just have to stay focused. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, man. That That's – you you itch to get to fight week. That's the most fun part for me. So, November 12th, I, I think this is your biggest fight yet. W- would you would you agree? Facts. This is – um my chance to rewrite history, if you will. And it's my biggest fight yet in the sense of the story. I don't think it's going to be um, like uh, I've had hard fights and difficult fights and it is a difficult fight, but like the story behind it and everything on the line, you know, this is where I thrive. D- yeah. Like, do you take it more personally? Obviously, like for, for those who mm-hmm. don't know, Alex beat you. One of the few people to ever beat you in kickboxing. Uh, but there's that. There's your the story goes way back, like you said. And now uh, you, you get, get to fight him, and I guess technically like avenge those losses. Is this yeah, more um, personal I, for you? It's, it's not personal in the sense like people want to make it. In the sense that I let this go a long time ago. Yeah. Like whenever you go through things like this, you you can't hold on to them. It'll just it's useless if you hold on to it. You take the lessons and then you use it to improve yourself and get to look at where I'm at now. So I, I let this go a long time ago, but the universe, the almighty has blessed me with this opportunity to rewrite history. Um, but I didn't take it personal. You can never hold on to those things because if I do, it's going to weigh on me. It's going to be something that I have to deal with going into this new fight. This is a new game. This ain't kickboxing. Yep, yeah. You know, this is not the uh, this is not the same thing. I'm not the same fighter I was back then as well. Even the way I fought him the second time is not how I normally fight. I was young and I let some things get to me, but this is a, yeah, this is a whole new ball game. This is MMA. And yeah, there's no, there's no referee to save his ass and let him yeah. breathe this time. Mm. Yeah, and it's the big stage too. It's definitely gonna be a bigger crowd, bigger, more people tuned in. Yeah, do you yeah. uh like, cause he he was like making some stories up and like talking shit and all that. Is that mm. like do you do you expect that from him going into fight week, or is it gonna be more more chill, more docile? Uh, I was surprised actually. He he was he made some segue clip that I saw floating around and I was like was that supposed to be a diss at me I was like all right it kind of reminds me of Costa a little bit um leading up to the fight but I think during fight week he's probably going to focus on cutting weight I think that's where his energy is going to be is trying to drop the weight and um yeah getting getting into the fight safely but now nah, fight week I mean he doesn't even speak English so I don't really have anything to say to him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to speak violence. That's the language I understand, and it's the language he understands. So we're going to speak violence, and he's going to hear me. He's going to feel me. How do you – I always wonder this because I think you do such a good job um, at sort of explaining this. I've seen you explain it in the past, but fighters have this fear of, of losing, right? It's a possibility going in, into the ring. How do you let that motivate you? Because – I think a lot of people, like the viewers at home or like the young athletes watch, who are watching this show, I think when they have fear, they let it deter them. Uh, whereas I think fighters basically run towards the fear and let it motivate them. How do you, how do you use the fear to your advantage? Um, fear is not, is, is, it's, it's a part of the human animal. Um, you know, no matter what you do in life, even if it's not fighting, there's always that element of fear or being nervous. And a lot of people, they fold. They fold under that pressure, you know. And this, for me, this is where I thrive. I mean, don't tell anyone. But <laughs> last. <laughs> no one's watching. No, like, no, one's, no one's watching. We... Yeah, it's just us. It's just us four, right? Yeah, um, yeah we don't get yeah, as many the, views the last... as Impulsive. So it's just a couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a couple of people. It's just uh, a couple but people. Um, the, the last few fights, like for me, I knew I was going to sass these guys. I knew I was going to waste them. And... I'm there, you know, doing my thing, and they're all kind of like, they're all shook. They're shook ones. They already kind of, they, they try in the first round, and once they realize, oh, fuck, this is not what I, I thought it was going to be like, then they try and survive. This guy is not going to be that guy. He's not going to try and survive. He's going to try and come forward and try and take me out. That's what excites me. That's what I thrive in. I need, I need that pressure, especially under the big lights, MSG. You know, the whole world watching. And that's what I've been saying. I'm like, I don't really even need to sell this fight. This fight's already sold. You know, this is the guy. 
that that beat me and finished me in kickboxing and now he's on another hunt in MMA to try and take me out. Is he going to do it or am I going to fuck him up? That's why people got to tune in and find out. But for people like us, this is where we thrive because, you know, fear is in the mind. Fear is just whatever you make of it. But danger is real. Danger is real. He's a dangerous man, but guess what? So am I, and he knows that. That's what. That's what. I, that's what I'm excited about this fight. Where would you? Because we're dangerous. Where would you rank this? Like amongst all your fights, where would you rank this in in mm. a numerical order? Would you say this is one of your your top fights just because of the storyline itself? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Top three, top three, definitely. Just because the fight hasn't even happened yet, but I have an idea how it's gonna go from from the work I'm doing. I mean, no one really sees. I haven't really posted much this camp. I post things for my, my I guess, obligations for my sponsors and whatnot. But no, nah, I've just been head down working, you know. Yeah. I haven't had to postpone this shoot, uh, this interview, because, you know, we're, we're working um, a little bit later just to match up with the East Coast time. We're doing everything we have to to make sure, like, we, we rewrite history. And, yeah, uh, that's what makes it exciting. But this fight, I'd say top three definitely going to be one of my all-time performances. Yeah, I think I think you mentioned a good point there, and like people don't really see what it takes to go into a training camp or all the sacrifices required. I, I really truly think that the public doesn't even have uh, a sliver of an understanding about like how much work goes into these Not things. Close, when, mm. which is because like, I mean, they're casuals. They're the ones that sit there and watch us do work. What's the what's that quote? The man in the arena. You know, we're the men in the arena. We're the ones that are actually doing the damn thing. Yeah. Without us, this shit wouldn't happen. So, yeah, um, they have no idea. It's it's even like you saw what was this Dillashaw just fought. Um, and I felt bad for the guy because literally popped his shoulder within 20 crazy. seconds of the first round. And all that work, all that build up, knowing he had his shoulder popped, yeah. you know, back and forth through the camp. That's all on him, but people would have no clue, no idea what was happening, and they just watch that and be like, ah, oh, he sucks, he's this, yeah. he's that. Yeah, he dislocated his shoulder. Well, that's fucking, the, well, that, that was embarrassing. It's, it's the, I, call mm. him the, I call it the fat guy on the couch. They have yeah. so much to say. No, nah, and that goes back mm -hmm. to like what you just said. Like The fight is sold because you guys have so much fun in there. It's like it's effortlessly, and that's where like the danger and the actuality of it is like, I, I know I'm in here to kill this motherfucker, but I'm having yeah. fun, and I'm entertaining and animated and the people gonna tune in just for that so it's already so they know when, when they hear you guys are fighting it's already like i gotta tune in yeah. yeah we make it look easy as well that's the thing whenever you make it look easy or whenever you're on a run you know you've been doing this for so long and been winning been winning been winning people just want to see you fall that's what society does it builds you up to, to break you down to tear you down so when when you're on a run like myself you know you just people just decide like ah oh, that was that was nothing. And I'm like, bro, do you know who I'm fighting? Do you know what exactly. how close that was to me so, to me getting to stop right there? Do you realize if I had made the wrong move right there, I would have got caught and put to sleep like that? Exactly. And then what happens? Where's all the what are they gonna say? Are they gonna feed my family, my future family? Are they gonna look after my people that depend on me? Nah. So I fight, you know, I fight the way I fight because I have to look after this. But I'm yeah. never gonna jeopardize this for anyone else in this world. And I've had some uh, some classics. Mm. And some more classics to come, but some classics. But you have to watch what I'm doing. And if you really understand the game, if you're not a fat guy on the couch, like Jake said, <laughs> and you understand the level of danger, the mid, like it's literally fucking milliseconds sometimes. You see fights just boom, gone, and the guy's out. You know, the guy's put to sleep. He's crazy. looking at the lights. So crazy. It's dangerous, man. We play a dangerous game. Once you're, once you're at the top, right, you, which is where you are, you can only go like a slightly higher, but there's all the way down to the bottom. And mm. that's what people don't understand about being at the top is the pressure. They expect you to win. They expect you to just beat all these guys. They don't realize like how dangerous the, the sport is that you're playing in. But the, the top mm -hmm. can only get so much higher. And so it's like you said, they're just waiting. They're waiting for you to fall. They're, they're trying to break you down. They're trying to criticize you, man. And you just, obviously you've done such a great job of rising above that. Likewise, likewise. I mean, I've seen the way, you know, you're, your short run in this game as well, the way you've handled it and the way you've handled all the criticism, all the shit. Now people kind of have to, they have to respect you now. They have to like, okay, well, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. To prove people wrong. Yeah. 
Do you, do you, uh, and now I'm fighting now. Uh, this will be out like two days before the fight. So I'm mm. fighting Anderson Silva. I wanted to see what your prediction was for the fight. Act like I'm not here. Like I want your general honest opinion on what Bro, you think's going to happen. you got to be careful. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll be honest with you. You got to be careful, man. Like Silva, when that fight, because I think Logan DM'd me a while ago when he was going to fight Silva. And he kind of asked me my opinion. And I was like, if you take this fight, take it seriously because he's no joke. Silva is the master. He's a mastermind, man. Yeah. And it comes to the level of even the way he talks, the way he speaks to you when you meet him. I mean, he's a friendly guy. I, I love Silva. He's cool. And he's a, he's a humble dude, genuine dude as well. But when it comes to war, he's a savage. Oh, he's, he's from the streets, bro. You, you got to remember, this guy's from the streets, from the favelas. He don't give a fuck. So the way he talks to you, I remember when we were weighing in, you know, we're in, we're in Melbourne. He starts getting teared up. And I'm looking, I'm just like, nah, fuck all that. And I'm getting rolled <laughs> up. I was just like, nah, fuck all that. And then I could just see, I was like, that's a tactic. He's trying to lower my defenses. And as soon as I got backstage at the Wayans, Eugene, my coach, just said, you know what that was? Right? I was like, yeah, fuck off. No worry, I got this. I was like, I'm not, I'm not taking it easy on this guy. I'm not being, I'm not going to like, you know, oh, he's my hero with this or that. Nah, he's a crafty dude. He's a spider. He'll fucking lure you into the web. False sense of security. That's one thing he's good at. I've seen him do it for years. He'll lure that's you into fire, false that's sense of security. crazy. Yeah, honestly, he will. Like even the way you in the web, all nice. Get you in the, web, guys, oh, you in the web and then wrap you up and <laughs> eat you alive. That's what spiders do. They save you. He'll be cool. Like he'll, he'll be your friend. But like thing is all that because you know he kind of sounds like uh, like Michael Jackson with his voice. He's very high pitched voice. So he's very. He'll lure you into this fault. and he's he's charming as well. D cut does the the best Silva impression. Uh, I'm just I'm so back. excited for October 29th with Jay Paul. I got That's to, fucked up. And it's just an amazing time to be, be here great show. and fight now. Hey, but actually, it's funny that you said that because I get the vibe. Like I know he's such a great person, but when it comes to mm. war. I know he's like being really, really nice to me to try to make this whole situation like feel softer, and I'm just like not yeah. feeding into it. I'm, I'm keeping that yeah. that deadly mentality for sure. Exactly. Don't just focus on the game at hand because there'll be a point when he's standing across the ring this time from you, and then he starts to move, and then you that that person you 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 you're used to seeing gone. You're like, who the fuck's this guy? I see. But seen um, it. yeah, just. Cause even like me in the second round, there was a point in the second round, like he's crafty, man. He's got a sneaky jab, sneaky jab. Like he jabbed me. And then I was like, ooh, that got me in my, it was a beautiful jab, no finger jab. His knuckle, boom, right in the eye. I was like, oh shit. And I was like, he got me that one. And before I could even finish that thought, another one, boom. And then you see him start to do this, start to do this. And he, you know, he's getting jiggy with it. He's about, he's, about to, he's about to run, you know, he's about to run his game, about to run the numbers. And then you, I just, I just had to like, okay, be aware, be defensive, freeze him, make him second guess himself. A lot of things are happening in those moments within that was like a 40 second sequence. And I was just like trying to do everything to like, okay, stay, stay active, make sure he doesn't get comfortable enough to throw. And yeah, um, I'm going to be honest, man. Like he's, he's a tough fight, but I said this to you at your house after your Nate Robinson fight. And I was just like, man, you're a crazy motherfucker, and I still maintain that you're a crazy motherfucker. So, you even getting this fight hap happening, it's it's something that is going to go down in history, and you can get it done. Silver can Sil Silver can be beat. He can be beat, and this is boxing as well. It's not MMA. He is getting older. I don't really think that plays a factor, as everyone's saying. Don't fucking believe the hype just because he's 42 or whatever. He's a different kind of 42 year old. <laughs> He's just different. So, yeah, um, just keep your, I mean, you've done your work. You you do your homework. And I know you have the resources as well. You've got your team, your coach, BJ, and all them looking after you. So, yeah, I don't want to ask what your game plan is, but I have an idea. I have yeah. an idea of what you're going to try and do to nullify his arms or his boxing in this fight. So, um, yeah, I think you can get it done, but do not fucking sleep on the silver. If not, it's going to be a bad night. Yeah, no, I know. I definitely know that. Uh, and I think that's what everyone says is like, I see ways where it could go uh, to, to either side. I, I got my game plan down. I'm, I'm obviously super excited. and I know what I have to do to win. How many rounds? Is it eight rounds or 12? Eight, eight rounds. Eight rounds. Eight rounds. Okay. Eight, eight rounds of work. Rounds. Just be sharp for eight rounds. Yep. Be sharp and focus for eight rounds. Do not lose sight of anything. Yep. Like, fuck the noise. I mean, enjoy the show when you walk out all that. But once you step through those ropes, just focus. 
just literally focus on that guy because he's going to focus on you. And yeah, I know you can get it done. I support. I like you, so I know you're going to get it done. <laughs> so I just, yeah, you, I want to, I want to see, I want to see you shake up the world. It's fun. It's fun to see you just throw, yeah, throw your shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the the MMA world is going to be pissed at Bro, me. I, hey, but this room, is bro. this is Dana's fault, man. He said I wouldn't fight him, so <laughs> I'm just doing what what Dana said I wouldn't do. So everyone could be mad at at Dana, not me. I, uh, mm. I do. I, I want to see you rematch Jan I know you mm. can beat him like would you ever go back up to, to 205 because I thought you, you won to. the fight mm. Mm. I mean I've, I've watched the fight again I had me losing but I have some really credible people who say I won the fight but I'm like nah it's all right it wasn't my night I did well but uh to fight Jan again sure I'll do it if he has the belt right now Jiri has the belt mm -hmm. um we're under the same promotion but I don't really have a desire to go up yet right now I just want to do what something that Silva did at 185, which is just run through everyone. Um, I have a few names of guys that are coming up that I look at and I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, that's a good guy. I want to take him <laughs> nice, out. And this nice. fight, people are going to be really surprised. Hey, I noticed you're, you're really always surprised. burping on interviews. My thing. Man, I to stay <laughs> you know the vibes. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, uh, for me, I just want to do what, I, what like Mighty Mouse Johnson did in his division as well, which is just run. It's hard, man. Like, people think it's easy to get the belt. That was the easy part for me anyway. But then staying champion, having everyone target on your back constantly, that's the hard bit. But I just make it look easy because I'm focused. And that's what I want to do. But going back up, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not a never. It might not even be for the belt. It might just be for a showcase. Just so I can be like, eh, I had one fight at light heavyweight and one. And then, yeah, keep that in mind you know, in my treasure box. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll see. The story's still being written. Of course. You right. know, it's, it's it's us, you know, like you said, it's it's the four of us it's talking here. Us. Yeah, it's just us here, right? Yeah. Nobody watching. Yeah, just us, think. just us four. <laughs> Can you give us a little insight on who's on that list that you just mentioned? A little insight. Um, I don't wanna give these niggas clout, man. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's let just me see, us, let me I see. Mean. No, they right now, yeah, it is just us four. Well, I mean, <laughs> You got guys like, uh, fuck, what's homeboy's name? The Hillbilly. Strickland. <laughs> I just want to whip his ass. I really just want to whip that ass, man. Yeah. He really is kind of a hillbilly. There's a good fighter, actually, I want to fight. Is um, the guy that he kind of just fought not long ago. Robocop is his name. He's a, he's a Brazilian guy. He's he, got, he had that gash. You cannot forget that gash. He had that cut. Cyclops. Right down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. Mm. He's he's solid. He's a good fight. No, no, no beef, no nothing. I just think he's gonna come up to the top, and then I'd like to test myself against a guy like that. Um, even Kamza, if he does well, I mean, mm. Leon's a champ now. But fuck, you gotta fight the top of the top at welterweight first before you even. I, but that's the thing. I don't want to give these niggas clout, so I'm just like. Eh. <laughs> but if he does well and gets the belt, why not? I look, I look to take my test myself against people like that. Um. Who else? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. But I don't, like I said, just the story's still been basically so, going. Right basically, now, everybody, Alex, anyone, can wipe out everybody. Yeah, everyone can basically wipe it get. get it's, everybody it's can up. get it. Man, woman, and child. If you can crawl, you can brawl. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. If you so can, you, you, you're saying you'd kick a baby? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, call, I thought Israel Adesanya on camera saying he'd kick a baby. This is why I don't do interviews no more. This is why I don't do interviews. The, the, the title of this clip now is going to be Israel Adesanya will kick a baby. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that. He got the title and thumbnail, bro. bro. If you're you can crawl, bro. we can brawl. Yeah, wait, thumbnail. put a thumbnail of me punching a baby. <laughs> Jerry Rice or whoever. Oh, this is nah, my but, face um, with a thumbnail. Yeah, I just mean like whoever can get it. Like, there's no, I don't discriminate. Like, anyone in this weight class, anyone at 185, and whoever just shows up, whoever signs on the dotted line can't get it. But, mm -hmm. but if you me, run out right of now, people there, there's focused. babies. Lots of babies. Yeah, a lot of depends. depends <laughs> if they can crawl. Depends Pika, on Pikachu off. back there. Pikachu, you might even hit Pikachu with that yeah. thumb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, he, he had nothing to do with this. Leave Pikachu alone. <laughs> I got no, a Pikachu but, um, with a gun on the back of my arm. But anyways. What? Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need more tattoos, man. But I wait till I'm done fighting. I hate training with fresh tattoos. Bro, that shit. Ooh, getting hit in that yeah. is the worst. Yeah. On a on a uh, more serious note, um, dude, I, I I know you're friends with Francis, and I wanted to. I just wanted to mm -hmm. ask, like, what's your stance with like the, all this fighter mm -hmm. pay? 
conversation going on and like oh, i've been saying that i've been saying that we're, we're still working like jay you gotta realize rome wasn't built in a day i probably the changes that we're we're trying to you know create i probably won't see it but it's not really about me it's about the future generations mm -hmm. yeah. it's about the future fighters and you know i know it's just four but i can't tell you the the things that we've we've talked me francis have talked me francis kamaru and a few other people have talked you know just because um yeah it's publicly known that francis wasn't happy with what was happening we weren't happy with what was happening i've heard of what he was getting paid for some of his fights from his own mouth and i'm shocked that the heavyweight champion of the world was going through that but again it's not even about them i want guys who i want i want if you find the ufc i want that to be like a prestigious thing yeah. i want that to be something that you hold your held high and be like yeah oh that guy's a ufc fighter even if he's not a champion you know that guy's a ufc fighter like the people say like he's an nba player like they just have this prestigious aura about them i don't want it to be like guys who fight in the ufc and they're still working second jobs to you know try and provide for their family even at the lower level that's the kind of change i'm trying to make i mean like i said the big 40 million 30 million you know, there's only one person getting that in the sport at the moment. Um, I'm doing quite well for myself, but I know for a fact that there's so much money being left on the table. Um, but for the for the guys who are coming up, for the guys who just signed on the dotted line to be in the UFC, the changes we're trying to make um, is, is to help them be able to, you know, fight and not work a second job, not have to pay for their corner, you know, but, little yeah, things like that. The fighter uh, minimum yeah. is only 12000 uh, you know, and, and it's like there's... You know, that's not, not something you can live on if not, you have to pay coaches, exactly. managers. You pay, you you pay for crazy. all that stuff. Yeah, what they make in the NFL, yeah, like what they make in the NFL, that's theirs to keep. Fighters have to pay for the gym, the coaches, the nutrition, the meals, the chef, the recovery, the massages, exactly. like all that stuff. And it just obviously go, goes out the window. And I think that's because the UFC yeah. has like these long-term fixed revenues like the NBA, like the NFL, now mm. it's time to increase the percentage, you know, the pay agree. fighters, which is 16%. Yeah. You know, you know, they need I to agree. make it, make it larger. And I guess, yeah. like, even like the bonuses, I'm like, yo, the bonus has been 50 K for, for how many years? I think the bonus should go up. Um, I, cause trust me, the UFC look after a lot of fighters They look after a lot of people as well. And not everyone complains about the UFC. I don't complain about my pain. I know I, I still, I know cause everyone, we put our fucking life on the line, man. So yeah. I know I deserve more. You know, but I get I get looked after really well. But from what I've heard from some of the people, I'm like, nah, that's not right. And I've I've said this publicly after my last fight and the fight before that. I'm like, yeah, change is gonna come. We're making changes, but it's a hey, it's day at a time. And I'll probably never see those changes. But it's not about me. It's about the guys coming up after me. That's the difference. That's where the the real change happens. You know, from from the work we put, we paved the way for these guys. And Francis has definitely paved the way, man. The guy like. You know, he, he pretty much took all the shots and he was put in a situation where he had to, you know, his back was on the wall, but now he's got the cards in his hands. Do you think that the fighters need to band together in some sort of union to actually get up to see change? Man, a union, I don't know how that's going to work. Because look, fighters are like strippers, man. You know, we get paid when we work. <laughs> that's the difference. We're not, <laughs> we're like strippers. We, we, we get paid when we actually show up and work. So, and everyone, that's the problem. It's... It's not just us, it's a lot of people behind us that, and everyone's on the lookout for themselves. So if we band together, that'd be great. We have, we, a few fighters have band together, but it's like I said, Rome wasn't built in a day, so yeah. I can't disclose too much. But yeah. um, trust me, I'm probably not gonna see, you know, these changes I'm not expecting to in my career, but I know for a fact, like with the work we're doing and with everything that's happening behind the scenes, uh it's not going to be us it's going to be future the future fighters the guys who just sign now the guys who are going to sign in the future they're going to be the ones to be able to benefit from the work we do now amazing uh, we appreciate mm -hmm. you man we appreciate you coming on everyone tune in november 12th to izzy's fight yeah and, man uh, much love and bro to you i wouldn't say good luck i'd say good skill jake good Thank skill you. and just keep doing you, man. Keep doing you. Like, it's fun to watch. And we'll tap in later on. Yeah, we'll tap in later on. I think we're overdue for a catch-up. 100%, oh, yeah. bro. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe pop into New York or some shit like that. Hey, let's feel go. free. Well, I can find, you'll find the MSG as oh, well, Oh, right? fuck. I'm banned. Yeah, but I'm banned from UFC events. Fuck, I can't pull Why? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? 
No, Dana, didn't do Dana, <laughs> Dana banned me. Really didn't do anything. Dana banned me after they uh, all were well, yelling we... "fuck Jake Paul" in the stadium, and then uh, I tried yeah, to go to a I different fight, that. and all of our tickets were were declined, banned. And then like his assistant was like, "Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here!" and like escorted well, me out the of the event. At the event. At the event, and then Dana White's son apparently I didn't know who it was at the time. He's like, "I fucking hate you." He was like drunk off of some shit, like wearing a some suit. Yeah. And he was like, fuck you. And he was he was using like racial slurs against me. Um, and yeah, that was the last that was the last UFC event. So I, yeah, I get I forgot I can't come, but <laughs> Damn, that's wild. But well, yeah, I mean, fuck. You still pull up, be at the after party, man. It's I'll wear a disguise. <laughs> I'll wear a disguise or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. They'll be like, yo, who is this guy? Just pull I up did. to UFC event, but a motherfucking jaw. I'm here to purchase a UFC ticket. That's what I'm bro, saying. Bro, the fat I'm suit. Be, Put the, the fat suit, suit bro. I'm going to wear the fat yeah. suit. Oh, uh, yeah. We oh, really I'll, be I'll be there. I'll be there. there. Do that. Do the whole makeup and everything. Like yeah, bro, the fat suit, fat, fat would neck, bro, with a whole hilarious. different hair, with a whole different wig, bro. I'm so down. And I'll, I'll try to get a <laughs> selfie with Dana. Bro. Oh, yeah, I'm Be like an emo, a emo fat dude, bro. Man, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll hit you, Izzy. We love you, man. Thank you so much for coming. Good luck, on. bro. Go crush it. Good skill. Enjoy yourself. Peace, Peace boys. out, my G. Round three, baby. Round three. The fight is in two days from now. This is one of the most stacked boxing events of the whole entire year. I say that unbiasedly. Okay, I, I, I'm just saying, like Ashton Silv, MVP's mm. new prospect. Mm. Electric. Dr. Mike versus Chris Avila. Electric. Le'Veon Bell versus Uriah Hall. Electric. Danny Barrios Flores. Electric. Adrian Rodriguez. Electric. Sedacia Green. The female assassin. The Terminator. I'm excited Electric. to see her. Electric. I'm excited to see her. This is a stacked uh. night of fights. A lot of fights have been canceled. But we're coming to you live, baby. Showtime.com backslash PPV. Be there. We're going to make our picks for who we think is going to win. Start from the bottom. Silva versus Hannah. Hannah. I'm going Hannah. D cuts too slow. He needs to take more alpha brain. Hannah. Adrian Rodriguez versus Griffin. I'm going Adrian Rodriguez. I'm going Griffin. <gasps> Against Ro I'm going, I'm going Griffin. Griffin. Bro, no. <laughs> Rodriguez is 2-0. Oh. Knockout artist. Danny Barrios Flores. Versus Ortiz Jr. Got to go with Barrios Flores. I'm, uh, I'm with you in that one. I'm with Flores Great young as well. prospect. Suarez versus Green. 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 Come on, stop playing Green. with the Terminator. This girl is absolutely amazing. Milton versus Sumter. Milton. You're going Milton? I'm going I'm Milton. I'm going Milton too. I'm going Sumter. I'm going with Milton. Uh, Santiago versus Neves. Santiago. He just got that killer look. I don't you know, got that man. killer look. I don't know. I'm going Santiago. Ten rounds. Chris Avila versus Dr. Mike. Avila. I think Dr. Mike's going to pull I off think the upset. Avi I think Avila. I think Dr. Mike's going to use his range. Keep him at bay. Yeah, I'm going I Dr. Think, Mikey. Dr. It, Mike. I think it goes out I'm with the body Dr. shot. Mike. Uriah Hall versus Le'Veon Bell. This is you the got the Steelers one. jersey on. Ooh. Come on, man. Come on, man. I Who are you going with? Going with my dog, Le'Veon. No Uriah question. Hall. Ashton Silva oh. versus Braulio Rodriguez. H2O. Ashton All day. Silv All by day. KO. Drip. He's going to move. Long to Beach. Eight. No, stop playing with him. Long Beach. That's all I got to say. Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. Wrong with the team, Paul. You already know what's going to happen. D-Cut going to win that night. You already know what's going to happen. I got D-Cut. Stop playing with me. D-Cut going to have a whole section mad. I stop ain't going to stop with screaming. Me. <laughs> Unreal. Mm. Stop playing with me. Team and Paul. a reminder that you can win $100,000 on better. 100 bands. If you pick five questions about me versus Anderson Silva, correct. Download better for a chance to win the $100,000. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week after I beat Anderson Silva. Peace. Roses are red, Crips are blue. Neighborhood Crip is coming for you. That was good. Yes. Yeah.